Hello, and welcome to another episode of Between the Bites, weekly discussions on cybersecurity, IT, and business. My name is Derek Parkinson. My name is Gary Arnold. And my name is James Fair. Welcome, gentlemen. We've got one thing in the news to talk about today, and that is LastPass. Still in the, in the thick of it, still in the weeds. Looks like they're having some more problems. We've talked about it in a recent episode, actually, and it seemed like they had a handle on it. And that it wasn't that big of a deal, but it sounds like that might not be the case. James, why don't you break it down for us and tell us what's going on? Yeah, so you may recall from our previous podcast that back in August, they had a breach where someone stole some source code and I think some like technical information about the company. Seemed like no big deal. But unfortunately, the attackers used that information to launch an attack against a phishing attack, actually, against an employee and gained access to their credentials. Now their, their network is set up, I think we discussed this before, it's really set up properly for security. However, what this employee did have access to was a backup. So they pulled from the stored backup copies in this, it's like a shared cloud information. I didn't, there's not a whole lot of details on that, but they were able to pull, they were able to restore a copy of backed up data. So what did that backup include? It included company names, end user names, billing addresses, email addresses, IP addresses, where uh, you logged into LastPass from, where customers were accessing LastPass, telephone numbers, URLs of websites, and an actual backup of the customer vault data, so your LastPass vault, as they call it. Now, to be super clear, none of the contents of your vault was compromised. So nothing in there was compromised in itself. However, if someone has a, they have the whole data, right? They, they got this data and they can brute force attack it all they want because they have the data separately now. So if someone had a weak master password, they call it the password to get into LastPass itself, then potentially they could crack that with some brute force attacks on it. So, you know, strong versus weak passwords, right? Weak passwords being five characters and it's a word. Strong character, uh, strong passwords being it's hopefully 12 or more characters. It's got complexity. It's got some numbers, whatever, thrown in there, some punctuation or special characters. So, yeah, I, unfortunately, that data is out there. Um, it is what we call 256-bit AES encrypted, blah, blah, blah. It just means it's really, really encrypted. It's encrypted with that master password. Now, they don't keep our master passwords ever. That's one nice thing about the way they've got this set up is that whatever you set up for your, your last pass password, they don't keep that information. It can never be stolen because they don't have a copy of it. Only you do. So it, and it unlocks it when you enter that password into your Chrome browser or your mobile app, uh, whatever it may be. So that data is, is very secured, locked away. And unless you, you know, like I said, unless you have a weak password, you're probably fairly safe. Now, I would certainly recommend everyone go and change their master password. But to be clear, changing your master password now doesn't impact the copy that they have because they have a backup copy, static backup copy. But it's a good good habit. Hey, this happened. We had a breach. So let's go ahead and change our passwords. That's the short version of it. A little layer to this, James, and correct me uh, if I'm misunderstanding this, but in them, in the hackers now knowing the list of URLs that you have saved passwords with, so they have this list of sites that you have saved your password in LastPass, they could, and many of us are guilty of this, <clears throat> they could... <laughs> If you've reused passwords, even saving them in LastPass, if you've reused passwords, they could just go say, okay, well, I do know this password from a breach from five years ago. I'm just going to go try it on this list of URLs for this user and get into other sites. Unfortunately, yes. You know, now LastPass does have a feature where they're doing dark web scans. And if a breach was found, they should alert you to say, hey, this password was found in a previous breach. You really should change this. So hopefully if you haven't seen those, you're probably good to go. I mean, you know, relatively good to go. Let's be clear. This is all kind of a little gray area here. A couple of things I do want to throw out. LastPass will never ask for your master password. So here's where the challenge comes in. They have people's email addresses. They have people's phone numbers. So I can tell you what's going to happen next is you're going to see a whole lot of phishing and texting attacks against LastPass users. So they're Absolutely. going to try to get that master password, right? They want, they want that information because they've got a block of data now. If they get your master password, they can plug that thing in. And, and in theory, I don't know what the data looks like, you know, personally, but in theory, if they get your master password, they can go unlock the entire thing, have access to every one of your accounts. So 
we're going to see a huge phishing attempt, as, as everyone's guess, on LastPass users. They're going to say, and it's going to look legitimate, right? It's going to have, hey, here's the date and time and IP address you access this information. Or it'll have your phone number. It'll have a website. It'll have things that aren't normally known that would not necessarily be included to create some legitimacy around their phishing attacks or text attacks or some combination, maybe phone calls for all we know. So we're gonna to have to be super careful that we don't fall victim to this. So the caveat is that LastPass is never ever going to ask you for your password, except when you put it into your browser or mobile. If someone's asking you for that, they're lying. They're an attacker, don't give it away. You should never have to enter it anywhere except to know. So of course we're gonna see simulated attempts at that. Uh, we've already seen LastPass, there was a, I think I sent an email about this internally, there were a bunch of attempts to get you to change your password. So it said, hey, your master password is due for a change. You need to go change it. And it sent you to a fake site where if you entered it, then they grabbed that information and went after this new attack. So that's where we're really gonna see the issue is the phishing attacks, I think. So unfortunately, the not only should you change your master password just as a good precaution, but if you didn't have a pretty strong password or if it was a reused password, as Gary mentioned, you probably should go through and change every password you have stored in there. That's unfun news, right? Nobody wants to hear that. But prioritize them. Start with the important ones. Your email, your banking, crypto, anything with money. Start there and then work your way through the list of them. Change your passwords, unfortunately. Even if you don't have a good, strong password, I'm going to do it. I believe in healthy paranoia levels. So just to be on the safe side, at least my email and my and my banking information and my crypto, I'm gonna go change my passwords because it's probably stored in LastPass and I'm paranoid and who knows what they can get a hold of. Or, you know, maybe I'm subject to a phishing attack in the future that I fall for. So, you know, I wanna be super careful with this. I wanna make sure I'm changing my passwords. Yeah, I know I've said it before, but if you think it's time consuming and tedious to update all your passwords, try reclaiming access to an account that's been stolen from you. Yeah, and then that's a hell of a lot more work. I do want to encourage everyone, if you do not have, I and mean, this is the show we talk about here, right? If you do not have MFA turned on already on your last pass, turn on MFA. And then the other thing we want to do is as you're going through, if you're changing your passwords, enable MFA on all of them. And if they don't allow it, consider going somewhere else, or at least you're asking them to say, you should absolutely have some kind of multi-factor authentication option on your site. I was just going to ask about that because, you know, <laughs> again, that's the theme of our, the second tagline of our podcast, that's enable right. MFA. Obviously enabling MFA, it's not a silver bullet, but it is such a good thing to start with and to do across the board. Will that help mitigate some of the, you know, even if you fall for a phishing scam and you click the link and you fill out the password will having mfa enabled step in and even if they get that they're going to be hitting a wall there which is the mfa wall that's exactly it it's a third layer that if they can't get past because they don't have your phone they can't receive your text messages they don't have your multi your authenticator then even with the login and password they can't get through and the same is true for every site your gmail site or hotmail whatever you're using if that information gets out at least you have another layer of protection so it is just beyond critical. And, you know, again, I, I want to reiterate that it's something I said from the last podcast we did on this is that LastPass is being very transparent about this. There are probably way more breaches out there happening than people are being honest and open about, right? How many companies, how many password storage companies have been breached or attacked and they're not talking about it? So, right, I, I've seen a lot of news people saying, well, you know, should we consider moving away from LastPass? And yeah, I, you know, if that's your decision, I wouldn't blame you. However, let's keep in mind, they're being open and upfront about this. We're talking about what they've done, what occurred, and what they're doing about it. Whereas most companies, you don't see that kind of information coming from them. So I appreciate the transparency. We know exactly what's going on. We know exactly how to deal with it, rather than being kept in the dark and later finding out there was a breach. Yeah. Yeah. So with the phishing emails, pay attention to the sender who's actually sending it to you. And if there are links, if it feels like a legitimate message from LastPass and there's links in it, ignore the link in the email, open up a browser and go to LastPass yourself so that you know you're on the right site. Any notification that LastPass would ever see necessary to email you about, they're going to have a notification on their website when you log in as well. You can find the same messaging. Yeah, I'm seeing Ace Hardware's new one. I'm like, how do you, how do you guys even know I right? shop at Ace Hardware? What the heck? 
<laughs> James, we appreciate this information. I think it's uh, it's good that we let our audience know about the situation and again, steps that individuals and organizations can take sort of head off any any future problems. It is unfortunate, but as we've said many times on the podcast, it's not a question of if, but a matter of when. And that's true of the smallest organization to the largest. So it's not an excuse per se of maybe the, the gaps that, that maybe occurred, but it's frankly not that surprising. Any additional thoughts, James, overall on this situation? But also, again, you mentioned there at the end, we don't necessarily need to jump ship from last pass. Uh, some businesses may make that decision. Any more commentary on alternatives? What should we be doing instead? Or should we just buckle down and say this is going to get figured out? Again, they're being above board. I think hopefully unless more gets disclosed or, or you know, this carries on further, that we've reached the end of this this thread, I'm hopeful about. So I have every confidence in saying LastPass is a good product and I recommend continuing to use it. I use it personally, I use it at work and I'll continue to do so. I will take the precaution of changing all of my passwords just to be safe. I do have multi-factor on everything possible where, you know, where I can on an authenticator. So I do recommend certainly traversing that a uh, <laughs> little bit of fun, but for anyone who's had their identity stolen or anything like that, like Derek mentioned, it's a long, painful process. My mom's email got hacked and she did, she did this. She's like, I have to change every password. I'm like, yeah, mom, you got to change every single password. Sorry. And it took her a long time, but she got through it. Right. And then like a couple months later, it happened again. And she's like, oh my gosh, how did I prevent this? So we turned on multi-factor authentication for her and she's been secure ever since. That does not say she will be forever, but so far so good. So, you know, I just, we can't hammer on this thing enough. <laughs> multi-factor authentication is the way to go. There are alternative products out there, but again, I think LastPass has learned from this, number one. So they're going to be far more aggressive about security and have more security measures in place than someone who hasn't been hit. And let's be clear, they're the biggest company out there when it comes to password management. They are the largest. So they had the biggest target on them. As Gary said, it was only a matter of time. So do you, if you want to jump ship, I totally understand. There's a lot of press out there. There's a lot of uneducated press, people just kind of freaking out. But in my opinion, I've been doing this for 35 years. I think they're just fine. There's no indication that our vault information is gone. Just change your passwords to be safe. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us and James for the update. If anything else comes to, then we'll definitely hop on again and talk about it some more. But hopefully, as you said, LastPass is learning from everything that's going on. And to every business owner out there, number one cybersecurity risk is human error. doesn't matter how good things are set up, so train your employees. Yeah, thanks again, gentlemen, for joining us, and thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks, James. Yeah, be safe out there. You betcha. See ya.